Welcome to Volume 2 of the Craziest Fights in NBA History. We decided to make this video because of the traction the initial video received. Thank you for all the comments, likes and views. And in case you haven't seen it, here's the link to the first video. So, without any further ado, here are some of the craziest fights and brawls the NBA has ever seen. precipitated the call and then here was the follow on the lip <laughs> by Walt Williams. They have to really regroup now. Three games without pay, fine 15000 but the without pay will cost him around $800,000 in lost salary, so a very expensive punch thrown at the head. After a series of hard fouls by the Bulls, O'Neal was actually hit in the head on the play by Charles Oakley, but he attacked Miller now. Luckily, that haymaker didn't land, but the move will cost the daddy $800,000 in salary along with the fine, and he will miss the Lakers' first matchup of the season with the Spurs. The New York Knicks, the best in the East, in Phoenix to go against the Suns, the best in the West. You don't need to build this one up. The Knicks were looking for their 10th straight win, but they had a fight on their hands against the Suns. Your two main combatants, Kevin Johnson and Doc Rivers. Rivers taking the ball up, and Kevin Johnson with a surprise for him, and Rivers doesn't take that. It goes after KJ, and the bench is clear, and everyone goes after everyone else. Coaches, assistants, everyone gets in it. By far the worst spectacle in the NBA this season. And you thought you only saw this stuff in hockey. It gets worse. Greg Anthony wasn't in uniform. He's the guy with the flower shirt. Throws the punch at KJ. You see Pat Riley? He went and tackled the gang. He got into it. Riley even ripped his pants in his melee. Rivers, KJ, Anthony Mason, John Starks, Danny Ainge all ejected. Anthony, there he is, escorted off, flower shirt and all. The teams did come back in the third. KJ still hot and bothered. Had to be restrained by Coach Westfall and his teammates. Anthony back with his new duds, also still hot and mad. He had to be taken away for a second time. Finally to the game in the third. It was all sons. Marley to Charles. Barkley loving this and rubbing it in big time. Barkley continued to talk with this shot and then the aftermath. Charles, uh, nothing technical about this win for the Suns. 121-92. The steal. There goes JR. Look out. Oh, that's a tough foul. Marty Collins. Careful. No, no, no. What's Robinson doing? Nate Robinson. Well, I don't know what. We got a bad, we got a bad incident here. This is an ugly incident. And JR Smith incensed. Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson now stepping up on George Carl. No, Carl grabbing. See, he's got Smith. There it goes again. Look at this. What is he doing? Jordan and Reggie Miller having a go at it. 
And I mean, we got fist rolling. Here come the benches. Bo Hill is out there. Uh -oh. Bill Jackson's going out there. There'll be fines handed out all over the place here. But more importantly, what in the world ignited this? Let's see if we can pick it out now. Here comes Pooh. He's on the drive with B.J. Armstrong. Now there comes Michael through on a block. Reggie tips it in. All right. Oh, there he uh -oh. hit him right there. Uh-oh. And that's what precipitated it. Yep. But believe me, Michael, you've been hit a whole lot harder than that. Good Lord, Reggie, 6'7", 185 pounds. Another angle upstairs. But here it is. Here's Pooh Richardson going in for the layup and rolls off. Here comes Reggie Miller on the follow. Now, when he goes through, he's the guy that bumped Michael Jordan. And Michael took offense at that, and Reggie sees him coming, and they get on each other. I think they bumped heads. You notice one thing about Michael? Neither one of them put their fists up. So there was no punches. Oh, I know, but my goodness, Slick. Now, Reggie has proclaimed himself the number two guard, shooting guard in the league behind Michael Jordan. Now, there's the punch right there. But you... Now, there was the punch thrown out. Reggie didn't get one in. Let's see what the officials are going to do here. Now, the, now, here's the, now watch. Now, it's okay here. It's okay. It's all right. Now, watch what happens here, Slick. Let's take a look. There's little, no grappling. Trash talking here. Now, watch him grab his face. And the injury's on the other side of the face. Now. There it is. Now, here comes the punch. The punch hasn't been thrown yet, though. The punch. Now, you see Grant in there. There he is. That's where he, there's where he cuts his. There it is. And there's the right punch there. right there for crying out loud. The punch is thrown very clearly. All right. An offensive foul on Reggie. An elbow foul on Reggie. He's gone. Long. They've been going at each other all season long. Rodman with a push on Mahorn. Lane Beer follows with the ball. And then Barkley and Lane Beer. Barkley gets in the left. Lane Beer will come back with an uppercut. Lane Beer, who's had that mouse under his eye for most of the season, also had a cut. Both benches empty. It went on for five minutes. The fans also got involved in it. It was an ugly situation. You can look for fines. I think the biggest thing to be concerned of for both of these teams is if anybody's going to be suspended for the first round of the playoffs. Both teams jawing at each other. The Pistons did not like the fact that the Sixers clinched the Atlantic Division on their home court. They tried to go to the locker room. Barkley went into the locker room and actually broke a toilet seat. He was so mad. As far as I'm concerned, we won the battle and we won the war. I think Charles did a great job holding his own out there. I think Rick did too. And uh, that's what it's all about. You know, you have two teams that are as competitive as these two. You, know, you expect things like that to happen out there. And I'm just glad we got those men out there willing enough to, you know, go that step to protect each other. You know, they, they uh, threw a lot of cheap shots down the stretch and tried to interrupt our celebration, but can't nothing take away from it. I got hit first. So, um, you know, what he says, is insignificant because uh, he really doesn't, nobody really cares about him, he's a loser. The other team neutralized him and, you know, to stop the fight, so that, that's what I did. And he pushes Kermit away. Now Rudy T, of course, who's the captain of the Rockets, was filling one lane, he, he's running towards Jabbar and Kevin to calm Kevin down when Kermit, who's backing up, looks over his shoulder. He turned and saw Rudy running toward him, and basically his instinct was just to turn and swing. He stopped, plants, and I saw the punch coming, and Rudy was running and saw the punch coming also and threw his hands up to protect it, and of course, the punch comes over it. And... I didn't see it, but I heard it. It sounded like a, a melon that had been dropped on the floor. I turned and I looked at Woody was on the floor and there was a pool of blood and it was just right around his face and it started expanding. When Rudy comes to his senses, he has to thought the scoreboard is falling on him. Everything just stopped. A whole place just became very silent. Three-point attempt. Here comes Houston again. Wiggins 
Dennis Johnson cuts him off. Reed. And now Seasting and Sampson. And now Dennis Johnson. And a melee is broken out here. A melee is broken out. The benches have emptied. And they have brought police onto the floor. At the bottom of the pile is Walton and Sampson right now. It all started with Sampson and Jerry Seasting. And they're still going at it, and there is blood. And now Kite has grabbed Sampson from behind. One of the players has a cut eye. And this series has exploded right here with fisticuffs. And we don't mean just pushing, we mean Ernest punching. Tony. Well, what happened, Dick, was Seasting had to pick up Sampson in a low post, and they got a little entangled, and I think Sampson, in his enthusiasm, let Seasting have one, and Seasting came back at him. It's going to be interesting to see what happens right now. Seasting is not a guy to back down, even though he's 6'1". There's Seasting guarding Sampson, and Sampson just swung at him and hit him again. And I'm telling you, this is an all-out, and nobody likes to see a seven-foot-four guy go after a six-one guy. I think it's just for Sampson's enthusiasm and, and desire in this ball game showing up. Dennis Johnson was the guy who was cut. He came in after Seasting, and it was Sampson who really tagged Dennis Johnson. If this were a well, boxing match, he would get points on that. He hit him flush in the eye. But he tagged. Seasting first, I'll tell you. And that's the one if he, sh he should be thrown out of the game for tagging Seasting. Seasting had picked him up in a low post. Here we see the subsequent action. And Dennis Johnson is not afraid of anybody. He'll go after big, small, or guy, guy, super giants. One shot. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more basketball content. And if you remember other brawls or fights we should add to volume three, Please let us know in the comment section below.